Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's graph reading group. We are joined by Ziming presenting his paper on physics inspired generative networks. Yeah, thanks, Hannes, for uh, organizing this wonderful um, talk series. So I'm happy to be here today to uh, talk to you about. Oh, so so first, by the way, I'm I'm in Ziming Liu. I mean the Department of Physics, also affiliated to IFI, which is basically the AI for Physics Institute uh, in the in, in the Boston area. Um, my research interest is like uh, the intersection of AI and physics. One way to use AI to automate physics discoveries. The other way is uh, like use physics inspired methods to build more powerful to build more powerful uh, AI models, as well as understand AI better with you know physics and uh, information theoretic tools. So uh, without further ado, so today I'm uh, the topic I will cover is like uh, using physics inspired ideas to build uh, generative models. So this is a, a recent preprint with uh, Dilo, Yilun Xu, Tommy Yakala, and my advisor, Max Tagmark. So the motivation question is, can physics help build generative models? Because as a, as a, <laughs> as a physicist, we want to show to people that, oh, physics is a very powerful language to, de to describe things, even design things. So we're asking this question, can physics help build generative models? So arguably, our universe or physics is a generative model. So if you think about the analogy here uh, in physics or in cosmology, you start from a few cosmological parameters and you generate uh, more and more complicated uh, data hierarchically, you uh, generate in sequence, you generate power spectrum, CMB sky map, multi-frequency maps, and finally you, you uh, generate telescope data, which we actually uh, can observe. Um, well, in generative models, you first have a concept of whether it's a cat or dog, and then maybe classically you do this multi-step thing, uh, Although in deep learning, like it's an end to end one step thing, but you can still argue that there are this low level, intermediate level and high level uh, feature emergent. So there are still kind of this uh, continuous generation of uh, an image, right? So because our question is like, uh, can physics help build generative models? And I say physics is a generative model, of course. So, so, that's, the end of, so that's the end of the talk. But I'm just kidding. So we we want to consider uh, something more technical, like actually build a generative model uh, in practice, not just do a uh, thought experiment here, right? So um, from physics, so there are already um, two uh, physics inspired generative models, or more if you brought the concept of physics inspired. But here I will focus on two uh, previous work. One is uh, the diffusion model. Uh, which inspired from diffusion equation. And another work is, uh, I'm also involved in the, the second branch of uh, models called the Poisson flow generative models, which are inspired from uh, electrostatics. So, um, so I will just very briefly uh, re review these two uh, previous works to give you an idea what, like, what, oh. Maybe. Maybe we can make the the um, review more focused on the Poisson flow, the PFGM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So, uh, yeah. So the diffusion model. I think the audience is already quite familiar with uh, diffusion models. So one relevant thing to this uh, is that diffusion models defines uh, the score function, which is the gradient of the log p of x. Uh, remember this, and we will show that in our gene freeze framework, this this uh, formula can magically emerge from our from our protocol. Um, right. So for Poisson flow, the idea, because we just uh, you know it's it's a new model uh, we 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 uh, proposed last year, so maybe it's it's less familiar to the audience. So let me just say a few more words about. Uh, Poisson flow. So the idea of Poisson flow is you view a data point as a point charge, uh, as in physics. 
and then interprets the data distribution as charge density. And once you have the charge density, you can compute uh, the electric field in the augmented space. Uh, like you put, you place these charges on this zero equals zero hyperplane, Z equals zero hyperplane. Uh, like, like originally you have a space, you have a data which is n-dimensional. Now you augment it with another uh, dimensional, uh, with another dimension. Um, and now you compute the electric field lines in the augmented n plus one dimensional space. And uh, magically, the electric field lines define a bijection between the data distribution and a uniform distribution on the very large uh, hemisphere as shown here. Um, so basically in, in Poisson flow, when you generate a sample, what you do is you first sample an initial uh, sample, a draw a sample from the uniform distribution on this very large hemisphere, which corresponding to a noisy image. And then you follow the electric field lines um, iteratively until uh, your sample hit the z equals zero manifold, and then you uh, get a, a very cute, cute dark image. Right, that's for Poisson flow. But let's zoom in out a little bit, forgetting about the technical details. Let's 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 come back to this uh, general question. Like the common ground, both diffusion models and Poisson flow have is that they both leverage physical processes. One is diffusion models. Sorry, one is diffusion equation and diffusion process. Another is uh, electrostatics or the Poisson equation. So in the ideal world, is there a universal converter that you can take in any physical processes and that converter would convert it to a generative model? Say you're taking diffusion model, you don't need any physical intuition, for example because designing diffusion model and designing Poisson flow requires a lot of you know, domain knowledge in physics, a lot of intuition, which are like, you, know, you need to have that aha moment to really have the model, but is there a more systematic way uh, that can convert, just given any physical processes and convert it to a corresponding generative model? So uh, ideally you take diffusion model, it auto generates, diffusion model, taking Poisson, and then generate Poisson flows. And, and you're taking um, the wave equation, you even generate the wave generative models, and so on. OK. Like, now you understand, right, that uh, I, as a listener, would be extremely skeptical of such a thing ever being possible, or anything towards yeah. <laughs> such a thing even uh, being entirely implausible uh, so um yeah that's yeah, great uh, claims yeah that's that's a that's a good i mean the skepticism is is uh extremely reasonable <laughs> um okay like yeah <laughs> yeah i, I yeah so, I can... uh, it would be fair to say that uh, like great uh, great conjectures or claims require great evidence so um, let's see what the great evidence could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so like like you can take uh, like X, like, like a physical process denoted as X and you want to generate to uh, X uh, gene fees. Um, so <laughs> like, <laughs> like, again, the skepticism <laughs> is extremely reasonable. So here we, we, we just show that, yes, the answer is, there is a universal converter, but there's a but there. So, so by yes, we mean there, there is a concrete protocol that can convert physics to generative models. Uh, by physics, I, I mean physical process in terms of, can be written as partial differential equations. Uh, by but, I mean the converted generative models may not have desirable properties. Because as I argued from this fault experiment, like from this physicist, uh, you know, arrogant perspective. You can think of everything as a generative model, but that's not what we use in practice. Some of them are not generative models in practice. So, um, so as I summarize here, you can see that, well, as expected, as we expect, the diffusion 
equation and electrostatics can give rise to valid geometry models. And perhaps surprisingly, that's the Yukawa interaction or uh, known as the weak interaction uh, can give rise to valid geometry models. But for like for wave equation, which is very common in, uh, in the natural world, cannot give a uh, cannot give a valid geometry model, and the same is true for shorting equation. But the thing becomes more subtle. For... So, yeah. No, will you talk about the Yukawa and um, like? Will you give us an example of what would it even mean to have a wave function generative model? And then, I mean, I yeah, even, yeah, 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 yeah. At I least I know what waves are, but Yukawa, I've never even heard about. So, will you also chat about that a bit? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it's in my couple of uh, next slides. Uh, right. Okay. So, so, yeah. So, so before digging into these specific examples, I just want to give you a high level picture how this conversion uh, is done. So uh, a physical process is uh, um, is usually described by this partial differential equation. So a diffusion equation, wave equation, Yukawa, they can they just have different forms of f here. So I see a raising hand here. Uh, yes. Uh, so I can't help notice that all the equations that you list in the previous slide and the formulation that you write down here are linear. Aren't they? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, uh, so will you talk about that as well? The caveat with respect to is there a universal converter? So, so not only is linear, it's also translationally and rotationally invariant if you inspect it. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I think in general this is not a problem. It's just analytical tractability. Mm -hmm. Like for such for such equations, you can. Uh, solve it using Green's function, and the Green's function is not, you know, it's independent of the source point. If you don't have the symmetry, well, if you don't have the linearity, uh, you cannot use the Green function method. If you don't have this symmetry, then you have to compute the Green's function for each point because you lose the symmetry. Uh, so with linearity and with symmetry, the the final answer can be expressed in terms of uh, Green's function. That's just for the co consideration of uh, analytical tractability. But like, uh, yeah, maybe there, um, there are cases we can get rid of this constraint that can also, you know, maybe you can compute it uh, numerically or also enjoy uh, tr analytical tractability, but uh, that's, much less systematic <laughs> like so so here we kind of constrain ourselves to this special class yeah sure but i'd, I'd love to chat about this or maybe offline later yeah yep sure right um so so like the the common ground for a physical process in the geometry model is that they both they can both be described by uh part, part of differential equations um a generative model uh if you study it's probability flow, or in general, density flow. Uh, it's the evolution of uh, the probability distribution or density distribution is just described by uh, this part PDE uh, at the bottom. So in, physicists, so in physics, we already know how to solve uh, the equation in the, at the top. Um, so if these two PDEs are equivalent, then we can directly transfer the solutions we have in physics to uh, convert it to a design, uh, to a design of a density flow, which you know mathematically we can abstract, we can abstract a geometry model uh, to to density flow. So once we have this correspondence, we can say that oh, a physical process uh, corresponds to a generative model. So that's the uh, fundamental, that's the base, basic logic uh, uh, behind this conversion process. So to make two PDEs equivalent, uh, you can simply match the left-hand side and the right-hand side uh, to make them the same. So match the right-hand side is, uh, is trivial. You can just set the source term to be, to be the data distribution. Uh, but like match the left hand side is more uh, non-trivial. But I wish I would give you some examples uh, to show you that uh, actually the 
con the direct construction is usually straightforward. Uh, but you can just like rewrite re rewrite uh, the above equation and turn it into the form of the uh, uh, equation at the bottom. Yeah, I see a raising hand. Sorry, you are not. You're, you're oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I was muted. Uh, could you go back to the previous slide? Yep. So uh, in the case of the generator model, is there any argument to not make it more complicated? Because at this point you have the advection term, right? So could you, could you, could you add a diffusive term to the generator model and make it more complicated? Oh, I see. That's, um, well, it's, 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 yeah, it's a little bit confusing to look at this. It looks like V only has a convective term, but as I show you that the diffusion term can also be included in this convection term. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can, yeah, 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 but maybe I can just show you the how you rewrite the diffusion equation into the yeah into the convection term. So the so the diffusion term is usually this Laplacian, uh, and the convection term is is this divergence term, which involves only one uh, spatial gradient. So what we did is to uh, decompose the two gradient operator in the Laplacian term to rewrite it as such. Uh, uh, can you see my mouse here? Yeah. So yeah. So basically, uh, yeah. You you, ju you just want to match them. So you explicitly write out a phi here uh, because p and phi are like uh, they they have this same row. Uh, uh, they are equivalent. So we explicitly have this phi here, but as a compensation in the gradient term, it becomes a log of phi because when you take gradient to log, it, you, you, you got a, a one over phi or, or something. So now we just compare uh, the two PDEs you, you got, oh, P is phi marked in red and uh, V is uh, minus gradient of log of phi, um, which you can explain it like, like, like an advection uh, term. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's known as the score function in, uh, in, in generative models, uh, in, in diffusion models, right? So, so I think the idea is that, well, the, this uh, convection term is more general than it appears to be. Uh, you, can, you can also rewrite the diffusion terms in terms of this uh, convection term. Yeah, okay, sounds good, thanks. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, yeah, so, 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 so I think this is uh, 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 previously we're at. Uh, so, yes, so that's for the diffusion equation. Um, for Poisson equation, uh, the source PD. So, yeah, so if you are familiar with the math literature, the Poisson equation is a steady uh, equation, which does not involve time, but we explicitly split out time here, like we, uh, think that they are, uh, so we split our uh, spatial dimensions and assign a, dim a dimension, the meaning of time. So here it becomes like, uh, it, 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 now it becomes a temporal equation. Uh, it becomes an evolution equation. So it's phi taking second derivative uh, with respect to time plus the Laplacian of phi. This is the Poisson equation we want to study. And the target PDE is, a, it, is again the same uh, as such. So our goal here is to rewrite, again, is to rewrite uh, the Poisson equation uh, such that it has the form of the right, uh, the right PDE. So uh, we explicitly think of phi taking first, like phi t, uh, by the subscript t, we mean you take uh, the partial derivative with, with respect to t. So here we explicitly think of phi t as a separate variable. So uh, the second derivative now becomes a first derivative on phi t so, so that you can match uh, this to partial p partial t. And you do the same, uh, uh, you, do, you do the similar matching process for uh, as in the diffusion equation, you can uh, finally you observe that p is minus phi t. Uh, the reason why there's a minus sign there is because uh, we want the p to be positive. So yeah, so we have a minus sign here. Um, and the convection term 
is, is exactly the Poisson field. Uh, and R is zero. I, I, yeah, I, I don't think I explained what R is. So R is uh, a birth death uh, rate. Like typically it's zero because usually in generative models, you just, you just uh, run, run uh, just simulates the particles. Uh, it will finally generate the sample. It does not end somewhere in the middle or it does not come out of nowhere in the middle. But, uh, it, it, but in general, we can consider this, uh, this birth death uh, rates here are, yes. So, yeah, so things work out. <laughs> so uh, things work out fine so far. And, and you might suspect that the glory, the success will continue. So let's look at the wave equation. You may think that, oh, everything is basically the same. Uh, except that if you compare the wave equation and compare the Poisson equation, it's just deferred by this minus sign. It's a minus sign here. So of course you can do the target, uh, you can do the match. You can match the wave equation to the, uh, to the equation on the right. And the, match, the matching result is exactly the same, except that uh, there is an extra minus sign before uh, the velocity field before the convection term v here. It looks like we succeed, but that's not the case. There is one thing I've missed so far, which is uh, the prior distribution, a constraint on a prior distribution. So uh, for generative models, we want the prior distribution to be independent of your data distribution. Uh, like you, 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 you draw a sample from Gaussian or from a uniform distribution, you want to uh, transform that into your data distribution, no matter how complicated your data distribution are. So for the so now tra translating to the to the physics language, uh, the final distribution of this physical process is the prior distribution. So we want the physical process, uh, the final state of the uh, physical system is independent of the initial distribution, which corresponds to data. So for, so for uh, diffusion and for Poisson equation, uh, here I illustrated a two-point uh, data set. So you see that they are mixing of these two point uh, sources when you evolve in time, like they become more like Gaussian and Cauchy-like. Um, so they converge to this uh, smooth uh, distribution independent, nearly independent of initial distribution. But for wave equation, uh, you always have this wave front uh, thing, which depends strongly on the initial condition, which means that uh, the distribution will not become simpler or smoother in time. It always has this uh, initial condition information in it. Well, this actually makes physical sense because that's why we use, we can use, uh, that's why we can communicate because wave does not, you know, diffuse. So my information I spoke can actually uh, propagate to your ears so you can understand what I'm saying. Otherwise my uh, tone would be, uh, would be, would just be blurred and make communication impossible. But uh, like from the gener generative model perspective, like if, if you want to draw something from the final distribution, it's at least as complicated as complicated as drawing from you know the initial distribution. So that that does not make any sense. So if you so if your prior distribution is as complicated as your data distribution, you don't know how to draw a sample from your prior distribution. So. Uh, that's why uh, for like for wave equation, we have this, you know, we have this failure mode. You cannot, like, like in our framework, you cannot uh, convert a wave equation to, uh, to a generative model. So uh, to, give out, to give out some a general rule, we say we define a partial differential equation X is as generative here as stands for smooth if the first condition is that it can be converted to a density flow so as i as i showed you uh 
it's case dependent, but usually the constructions are straightforward. Um, so we more like 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 the second condition is more uh, is more key to discriminate uh, valid or invalid. So the second condition uh, states that the solutions of the PDE should become smoother over time. Um, well, it sounds like a handy uh, it sounds like a handy argument, but the intuition um, I already illustrated with the wave example. Uh, but mathematically, we can <clears throat> we can describe it mathematically rigorous in a rigorous way. Uh, it turned out to be the second condition turned out to be equivalent to a constraint on on dispersion relations. I will tell you what what are the dispersion relations in in, in in the next couple of slides. But the intuition is that. Oh, sorry, I, I just see uh, Henry is here. Hey, uh, okay. yeah. So what you're saying basically is that because with the wave equation, it's uh, very hard to draw a sample because the distribution is complicated. Right. Uh, this means that uh, you cannot like you cannot use that as a generative model. Um, yes. But like it. I'm not sure that this is the case. For example, like if you go back in the figure in the previous slide, um, you show, uh, yeah, you, you show the like the two circles at, at the end. Um, my question is like if you use uh, a sum of random waves as your initialization, so a random Fourier series. Mm. as your prior distribution from which to sample, uh, wouldn't that be compatible with the wave equation as a random initialization? Um, sorry, I may miss the question. You mean, you mean the, uh, what do you like, mean? Like, can't you, data? can't you sample, can't you sample a random distribution from a random Fourier series instead of sampling from Gaussian noise? Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm. So, so you mean we deal with the Fourier space uh, rather than the real space, uh, rather than the uh, yeah. So, I th maybe that's yeah. That's an interesting perspective. That's an interesting perspective. Um, actually, what what. The dispersion relation I'm gonna talk about is related to this Fourier uh, perspective. I'm not sure if it's related to what you're saying here. It seems that what you suggest is a very general thing. Maybe there are possibility that we didn't thought about, but it's feasible. So I, I still think that I, I, I need to think about it uh, more offline. And yeah. <laughs> so Tom, is what you're saying that? Um... Or like you two together this is what you're conjuring up here together. Um, first of all, we have this wave. We have we can um in closed form add noise, so to say to it, or diffuse it um in closed form, but we're not able to sample from the stationary distribution. And that's the issue that you're highlighting yeah. here. But I think like it's going. No, to... no, no. I mean that's yeah. that's uh, like the is that what you're showing here? Like is that true? Seeming that we can um, in closed form have our destructive process, or in closed form we can have our diffusion, but we're not able to sample from the stationary distribution, the prior distribution. Um. Uh... Yeah. Sorry, uh, what does it have to do with diffusion here? So I, I just don't um, get. <laughs> Sorry, the, the we are able to simulate the process in time. Like you yes. have this arrow okay. pointing down in time. Yeah, right. we are able to simulate that uh, easily. Yes, exactly. when we start with yes, but the issue is that we're not able to sample from the prior distribution. And now Dom is exactly. saying, what if we? Um, instead, go into like we, yeah, we go to Fourier space. Um, oh, like have a portion oh, in Fourier now. space, and then in, ah. then we transform it back to our actual space, and this is then a sample from the um, stationary distribution. 
Oh, I see. I see. I'm not sure. Like, it sounds like Fourier space would not reduce the complexity of it very much. Like, because Fourier like transformation is a unitary transformation. Like, like its norm is maintained. So, like for wave equation, the high frequency modes are still maintained, and we need the extremely large Fourier vector. Just you know, because they are. Yeah. They're just large high frequency coefficients. And maybe we need to select, also need to select the cutoff uh, wisely. But so what uh yeah, what, what I'd like to say here is that like the wave equation will preserve all the frequencies and amplitude just by the propagation of waves. If exactly. there is no process to change the frequent the amplitude of each frequency. However, if you just take the wave equation and you add a process by which amplitude can change, then you could theoretically start with a random Fourier series. A random Fourier series will basically give you similar coefficient to uh, at every frequency and then change the diffusion process, still applying the wave equation. Like, I, I think that there might be a way to work around that. It will be a lot more complicated. That that I would agree with you, but since um, yeah, since the wave equation can like uh... yeah, are, are you suggesting like to to combine diffusion and wave? Uh, we we actually yeah, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not suggesting this, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not exactly suggesting that like it would be definitely one of the possible suggestion, but I'm just saying that like. Uh, simply saying that it's hard to sample from the distribution is not necessarily true because you can sample oh. from a set of random waves uh, with the Fourier transform, but then the diffusion process, simply diffusing waves, like uh, will not generate something meaningful because the frequencies and amplitude are preserved, uh, the, the amplitude at each frequency is preserved uh, through the wave equation. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I yeah, think it's yeah, not yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, easy to say no, but it's uh, it's probably harder. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it probably takes more thinking, like to to figure out the transformation that that after transformation is easier to uh, sample from. But I'm not sure if that's as complicated as building a generative model. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I see another raising hand raise here. Yeah, I think regarding this point, like no matter how complicated is the initial distribution, like the the, the characteristic of the diffusion process because of like that uh, dispersion property will kill off all those information because it has like infinite wave, wave speed, right? So I don't think it's possible to transform a a wave equation, a wave, a hyperbolic PD, because wave is hyperbolic, the other one is parabolic. The parabolic characteristic is infinite wave speed. It's I think it's not possible to transform it to a parabolic equation. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like like the wave equation has a finite wave speed. A constant. Exactly. Yeah, but diffusion and Poisson have infinite uh, wave speed. Uh, so uh, what we did is try to combine these two uh, well, maybe I can show you here. So we have this dissipative wave equation. Uh, so basically, it it is an interpolation between diffusion and uh, wave in the sense that uh, it still have this wave front, which is similar to wave equation, but it has this peak in the middle, which uh, is similar to the diffusion equation. Uh, this some this sounds like an artificially contrived example, and I I agree it is uh but but it's like uh maybe mixing these two can can help this is something unclear so that's why we drew a question mark here and also in the paper uh maybe by adding some wave term to diffusion equation can help in some sense but but i'm not totally sure uh, yeah actually this is this is quite interesting because in classical pd solver numerical methods like there is like a Com completely different approaches to tackle parabolic equation versus hyperbolic. Mm. And sometimes those hyperbolic solvers, like for example, if it's finite element, they, they have some stability issue and people add artificial diffusion to suppress that oscillation. Right. 
yeah that would be like i i i'm really interested to see how these are these can be connected because it's very difficult to combine to have a solver that can have a solution for parabolic and hyperbolic at the same time yeah 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 that sounds like it will even distributive wave equation works it poses it it, it imposes a practical challenge as you said it's like have hyperbolic and parabolic at the same time um yeah let's see yeah so 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 now it boils down to different types of equations like commonly we see in physics uh like for a distributive wave equation we just we just talked about it interpolates between diffusion and poisson oh sorry di uh, uh sorry diffusion and way ideal wave equation so maybe if you tune this viscosity parameter epsilon here really large it's recovers the diffusion equation. It's more like the diffusion equation. Maybe in this limit, uh, this uh, dissipative wave equation is valid. But if you turn the viscosity coefficient epsilon to be zero, it recovers the ideal wave equation, which means that it's not valid in our framework. And uh, also similar things happens for the Helmholtz equation. If you, uh, there is this hyperparameter k0 here. If you set k0 to be zero, it recovers the Poisson equation, which of course uh, can produce a Poisson flows. But for, for non-zero k0 here, you see that uh, uh, you see the Green's function is, is, a, is a little bit wave-like. This is also because the Helmholtz equation describes you know, the propagation of wave with, with certain frequency. Um, yeah, anyway, so, so also for, for Helmholtz equation, we draw a question mark here because it depends on this hyperparameter. But yeah, but for the screen Poisson equation, AKA Yukawa, uh, it's basically the Poisson equation, including an extra term here, uh, extra uh, just proportional to the phi, uh, a minus sign here. So if you examine its uh, Green's function, it's, it's, it's as well defined as the uh, Poisson kernel because it's always it's always uh, like positive, uh, but it's it's not integrate it does not integrate to one. But that's not a problem because we can like simulate the depth and birth of uh, particles uh, in you know in simulation. So that's what we mean by oh by having uh, we can take Yukawa interaction but by that we really mean the screen Poisson equation and convert it into a into a generative model and um, and and similarly for and similarly for shorting equation you see the greens function is always oscillating endlessly and because we can think of the shorting equation as the quantum wave equation so uh so similar to classical wave equation it does not fit into our framework Yes, so so to describe which you know which PD are uh, like like satisfies the second condition that it be, the smoothing condition, uh, we can use the so-called dispersion relation. What we mean by dispersion relation is that we want to test out whether a PD allows wave-like equation, a wave-like uh, solutions. So basically, we have this test function, phi. Uh, it's basically a plane wave solution. Here, x is the spatial coordinate, t is time, k is the so-called uh, wave number, uh, a dual variable to space, and omega is the angular frequency, a dual va va variable for time. So it describes a wave propagating in a uh, space in space and time with, you know, if you just, if you reside at one point, the oscillating frequency is omega. But if you fix, if you take snapshot, uh, if you take a snapshot, you would find that the wavelength is inversely proportional to K and so on. Just to give you, a, just to give you a intuition what this means, it's a plane wave propagating in space. So we insert this test function into 
this linear PDEs, then you would Im Im immediately get uh, the so-called uh, a relation between omega and k, which you call the dispersion relation. Yes. So, um, so if so, k is always real. If omega is also real, this means that it allows the PDE allows wave-like solutions, and this is not some. This is not. This is undesirable in our framework. But if omega has imaginary part, it's desirable because having in having a, a negative imaginary part uh, means that the wave, the mode with frequency k would decay away in time. So basically, the the intuition is that. Uh, omega, uh, when it's imaginary, the imaginary part, the smaller the imaginary part is, the faster it decays away. It, it, it is faster for that mode to decay away. So, uh, so we have this condition states that the, um, the imaginary parts, the imaginary parts of the omega at k should be smaller than the imaginary part of omega at zero. The intuition being that uh, the decay of the non the decay of non-zero frequency modes should be faster than the decay of zero frequency modes. So at the end, you will get a very smooth theme because it's high frequency modes uh, all decay away. So once we have this dispersion relation, we don't need to constrain ourselves in in PDEs that have physical meanings. We can actually go be more crazy about it. We can take any partial differential equations, not necessarily have physical meanings. It's just a PD, oh, but still it's, it's linear just to make things easier. We still take, uh, can take this uh, PDEs and examine this dispersion relations as long as it satisfies the constraints on the dispersion relation to make it like evolve to be more smooth in time. It is a valid, uh, it's a valid generative model. So here, uh, I, I just do some play. I, I just play with uh, some of the mix and match. Like we can mix the the diffusion uh, the diffusion equation with the Poisson equation to get this hybrid equation. And this dispersion relation still uh, is is uh, satisfies the constraint. So it's a valid joint model. And the th same thing uh, happens for like fra fractional diffusion. Like you no longer have a Laplacian, but you also have a power exponent here. And you can consider other like uh, third order diffusion, like you have third order with respect to time. And you can also think about fourth order derivative in space. And this all gives, gives you uh, a valid uh, dispersion relation. Yeah, I, I see a hand raised here. Yeah. I uh, so if you could go back to the previous slide, uh, my question would be regarding the Schrodinger's equation, and this is something similar to what uh, Hannes pointed out at the beginning. What does it really mean for the density flow to have a complex component? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a uh, that's a good that's a very good question. So I missed uh, so I missed this point. If you see the last uh, column of this table, actually we although the Schrodinger equation is, like the phi here is complex, we can still, you know, derive a real, uh, an equation just have real variables. Like we, we know that's the phi squared have, sorry, uh, the phi, the norm phi squared have this probability interpretation. So actually we are working with this uh, equation with phi squared interpreted, interpreted as probability and its velocity field is uh, you know is the imaginary part of 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 this score function. So again, it's a it's it's a real stuff. It's 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 real. It's no longer comp. It's no longer complex. Um, but like deriving this is highly it's highly non-trivial and it's something known as Bohmian mechanics in uh, quantum physics. It's an alternative interpretation of quantum mechanics. Um, yeah. So yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So this is something I missed here, but but like the takeaway is we can convert it into a real equation. Right. So uh, in, in some sense, when you take the probability amplitude, then 
it's a generalization of a wave function to so to speak right a wave, wave, wave equation yeah 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 exactly exactly so so if you examine its um uh dispersion relation i think so so, so for the shorting equation its dispersion relation is still real i mean the omega is real meaning that it has this wave-like solutions which is undesirable even more undesirable because it's k squared meaning that for higher frequency modes like uh yeah i don't know it's it's just undesirable <laughs> all right thank you yeah thank you yep yeah so i have a question regarding your fancy pds um one thing that's interesting about all the equations that come from physics is uh, the conservation of energy. Um, right. And these equations clearly won't have conservation of energy within like uh, the space that, that you work at. So um, yeah, so there's, uh, if you don't have the con conservation of energy, it might like, uh, suppose like you, um, I don't know how to to explain yeah, like yeah, my yeah. thought, but like right. if you have a single yeah. step, you yeah. preserve, for example, the coloring of the, the the general luminosity of the image. For example, if the luminosity, uh, the the intensity of the pixel is analogous to the the energy, you preserve this kind of quantity. When you go with higher orders, like uh, I don't know, like you can take um, the the Laplacian of a universe of dimension eight, but then you will lose so much energy at such a short distance. Um, mm. So like there's, uh, yeah, have you studied like the effect of uh, these, uh, may maybe it's in the future slides, but like, have you studied the effect of like going further away from physics and how it affects the performance of the generation? Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. Like energy conservation, like not necessarily energy conversation. Uh, sorry, energy conservation, but just uh, they can be right in terms of the continuity equation. So it's like if you consider the uh, so, so the probability, uh, so the probability is conserved. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. I think that's a very interesting question. Like, can if you have energy conservation, is it is it is it better to have energy conservation in your general model? And uh, frankly, my answer is I don't know whether energy conservation. But but like what I I kind of feel what you are getting at here. But what do you mean exactly by energy conservation? Say in diffusion models. Like, like, yeah. Well, this is the reason why, like, it's a bit hard to express my thought, but like, um, uh, definitely, like, if you, uh, yeah, I'm not sure because, like, the, the diffusion process goes into the score function. Like, yeah, so it's a bit hard to express, like, how it would affect the generative model, but, uh, one, simple trick like uh, you you can take all these equations and have them go further away from the real physical equations so they will have less conservation of energy either energy gain or energy loss um, or like in other ways would be to just uh, uh, I don't know like try to add energy in the system in another way, but then you, you have to, to understand like how the energy plays, yeah, what, what would be the analogous of energy within the diffusion process? And that, that in itself might be a difficult question to answer. Um, but from my personal perspective, like, yeah, if you go back to your first slide about intuition, about saying that uh, like, uh, the the universe is a generative model yeah <laughs> and it follows these equations well 
remove the conservation of energy and then I'm pretty sure the universe is no longer um, a generative model and everything gets destroyed somehow. So like, yeah. Anyways, it's yeah. really interesting to, to look at uh, like what kind of equation can you use and is conservation of energy right. or probability <laughs> right. important? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I, I think the common belief is that, uh, well, 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 this might be something physicist, but the common belief is that uh, energy is conserved if you think of, take the universe as a whole. But if you study a subset of the universe, like you just focus on subsystem, then the energy is is not conserved so uh yeah so yeah yeah so when we say the universe is a generative model we are basically thinking it as a whole maybe the whole because it has this energy conservation but like you take wave equations you uh ignore many of the other things we just study the wave so uh like if you have a dissipation the energy of course is not conserved uh because it transfers, or or you can say that it can transfers to heat or something in physics, but like the implication on generative models, I think is very interesting. But I don't know yet how to really uh, analyze them. Yeah, if if you if you have any um, more ideas, we can we can we can talk about offline. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no ideas for now, but uh, yeah, you are right. Like if we think about uh, energy being conserved, if you take an open system, energy right. is not conserved, right? right? right. The energy right. can flow away of the system and maybe image generation is actually better if it's an open system, like, I, right. I don't right. know. So that's- uh... <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. So yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is another point I didn't uh, include in the slide, but it's, uh, it's important to emphasize that uh, although we, uh, say that the shorting equation is not, you know, is not satisfiable, is not, uh, cannot build a generative model. We mean the shorting equation uh, for a free particle. But if you have any potential function or it's an, even it's an open system, it can formalize this uh, in the sense that uh, no matter what your initial distribution is, whether it will converge to its formal state, uh, which is a steady distribution. But by, by having that you need to have, you need to, uh, it, it has to be an open system, which mm. includes in some extra uh, dissipation term and interaction term with the external field, something like that. So here we just make things the minimalist, the, the sim keep things simplest and say that, oh, the free particle, the short equation for the free particle is not, you know, it is not generative, but we didn't, exclude out other possibilities like try open quantum systems say yeah. yeah no you are definitely right here like uh, for example when we discuss the uh, dissipative wave equation like if you can add energy to certain wave and remove energy to other waves uh, then you can probably generate anything um, just because anything can be described as a sum of waves um, Right, but you need right. to be able to change the energy of the system. So, yeah, maybe. Uh, right. Yeah. Maybe there's benefits to this kind of loss or not. Anyways, uh, it'd be great for future work. Um, like, uh, but uh, the, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I, I absolutely think this uh, this is a still very restrictive framework, and a lot of opportunities are out there. Yeah. Yeah, so like I only talked about linear PDEs, but but like the the real reason our natural world, our universe is so complicated is because the long linear effects like Navier-Stokes equation, reaction diffusion equation. How can we leverage these equations uh, to build the geometry models? And 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 also we just answered the question: what kind of uh, physical processes are feasible? But we did not answer which one works the best in, in performance, in, in practice. Maybe, maybe it's depend on the data uh, distribution. Like maybe if your data has this property, you better use that, uh, you, you better use this generative model. And if your data have that property, you better use that generative model, maybe something like this. 
but uh, this is uh, missing in um, in this paper. Uh, in this paper, we just want to point out that what things are feasible. Yeah. So 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 definitely, there are a lot of uh, things we can do. Uh, a lot of opportunities to explore in the future. So that, I think I think that's the end of my slide. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, thank you for the presentation and for um, inspiring us, all I would say. And yeah, I think the. Um, this, yeah, thank you for the insightful discussion. I, I also, uh, yeah. I think this framework or this idea, it's, it's, it's fun, it's cool. And um, yeah, it's not like you have to um, write. So I see this all as. There's no particular reason why these, if we can convert some concepts from physics to a generative model, there's no particular reason yet why it should work better. And then the motivation right. for then actually investing a lot of time in getting it to work and trying to get it to, to work better than some previous generative model is if we have a reason to believe it to work better. And for PFGM, for example, we had this, like some reasons to believe that it would work better than the fusion models. Yeah, that would be yeah, data. that would be awesome if we can have a reason why we prefer one physical process over another physical process. But like uh, maybe dispersion relation is a is a possible way to look is a is, is a possible way, way to look at this. But I still feel that uh, I personally feel I I didn't really understand uh like like what kind of theory we uh, we can possibly imagine not even close but but if you guys have any idea i'm happy to talk offline okay then yeah, any I mean, more questions okay yeah. no great uh, great presentation i think it's uh, very interesting to look at uh, how to integrate more physics into the system um and uh, usually more physics into the system is the is better. <laughs> like right now, we don't know why, but maybe in two, three years, we'll find out. Um, one thing that would be cool is like, you have all these different equations and what if you uh, look at things that are, how do you say, like uh, more compatible with these equations? Uh, because like what you said is, at some point, maybe the best, um, maybe the best uh, equation to use, uh, the best PDE to use, is the one that corresponds the best to the data that right as yeah. a data distribution. Yes. So, yes. what if your dis data distribution is really trying to imitate waves? Uh, then will uh, damped wave equation work better? Um, what if you're trying to replicate? Um, I don't know, random motion, like uh, not, not just like creating images of uh, humans and cats, right, uh, as others do, but like uh, trying to replicate physical systems. Right, right, right. Build the right PDE that corresponds the best to that specific uh, system, will it give better performance? And uh, my guess is probably yes, uh, but we never know. Yeah, my hope <laughs> i hope is that this is the case like for example uh if you if you model charge system you want to model charge system or like protein folding there are like this long range interaction maybe poson flow is better than diffusion because it's what really happens in uh protein folding because they are like electrostatic uh forces but uh i mean you can come up with a lot of engineering tricks and to compensate such uh, inductive bias mismatch. And also, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just that I, I think that I, I, I fully sympathize with the intuition that your data set have some inductive bias and your general model have some inductive bias. If they match, they bend, they create the best thing. But if they, they don't mismatch, uh, they probably start off worse. Um, but again, maybe, they can be compensated by some engineering tricks <laughs> to, to make it better. So I hope that 
uh, we can see a strong signal of such, you know, we need this matching inductive biases uh, in, in the future. Um, yeah, that, that would be very interesting to look at. I yeah, guess, definitely. sorry, sorry, Don. Uh, I guess it's very interesting that you mentioned inductive bias because uh, you formulate the PDEs in the Euclidean space or you write down the PDEs in the Euclidean space, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I guess an interesting idea would be to try to use uh, coordinate free formulations of PDEs. Oh, I see. That takes away the inductive bias that's already embedded into your model in some sense, right? I see, like you uh, model the climate of the globe, so you probably want to uh, run the PD over a manifold rather than a Euclidean space. Yeah. Precisely, right? Right, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's already interesting because you could use something like a diffusion map to embed your, so to speak, um, let's say, flow, uh, the density, and the PDE, the diffusion equation now becomes an ODE as opposed to it being a PDE. Right, yeah, exactly. Oh, we should talk about this. We should talk about this offline. But uh, this is very, this is very fun. Thanks for the talk, by the way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think for any generative model, uh, like based on physical process, you can, yes, you can move them from Euclidean space to many manifolds. Yeah, yeah. This this is a very interesting point. Thank you. Awesome to see this framework for creating generative models from physics principles. And if you have a good reason why a certain physics principle would work better for a certain generative model, then uh, that becomes especially interesting and especially cool, I think. And if you want to hear more cool stuff like this, then join us in the future, maybe also in the Zoom session and not only the video. All the information is down in the description, also our Slack channel, our mailing list, where we get all the updates and you can vote for future papers. Thank you.